Chinese shotgun burn down commence. <laughs> A good start. <laughs> Today, the most brutal shotgun burn down ever, probably the cheapest shotgun burn down video with this $119 piece of shit. Before I get there, I buy these guns with my own money, so please think about supporting me and Ryan on Subscribestar or Utreon. By the way, there will be a very special giveaway only for Subscribestar and Utreon members, but I'm not allowed to talk about it on YouTube if you know what I'm saying. I'm giving away something special. I've got something special right here the Stevens 320. If this is your first time watching the Burndown series, I run 500 rounds of miscellaneous 12 gauge through miscellaneous 12 gauge shotguns in one rapid fire range session to see how they respond. But James, 500 rounds doesn't sound like a lot. AR-15s run for over 10,000 rounds. Yeah, that's true most of the time, but the gauge is a different animal. And if you don't know already, more shotguns have failed this Burndown test than passed. Sure, there are plenty of crappy handguns and rifles out there, but only a few of those handguns or rifles will self-destruct in 500 rounds. But 500 rounds of two and three quarter and three inch magnum shells over the course of 60 to 90 minutes is brutal on a shotgun, especially the cheap ones. And brutal on the shooter too. Holy shit. Oh my God, those are the hardest two and three quarter rounds I have ever shot. This is not cozy. Anyways, I get tagged on the gun deal subreddit because some of you want me to review a $119 shotgun. I can't fulfill all viewer wishes, but as long as they're reasonable and don't involve skin to skin contact, I try to oblige as many as I can. So I bought this son of a bitch anyways. The Stevens is interesting because it's a clone of the Winchester 1200 series, meaning it has this kind of weird rotating bolt head separate from the carrier, which is surprising to find on a budget shotgun like this because that typically involves more machining, more parts, more expense. But make no mistake, this definitely feels like a cheap shotgun. I know that there are conspiracy theorists out there who believe that it costs Benelli $250 to make an M4 and they mark it up. $2,000 because they're the Balenciaga of shotguns or something like that. And these Turknellis coming into the country are just as good for a fifth of the price. But as we've shown, it's really hard to make a really good shotgun that cheaply. The one I bought holds five plus one of two and three quarter inch shells, 18 and a quarter inch barrel. So it's pretty handy for self-defense. I was surprised to find out that it weighs 6.8 pounds because it felt a lot lighter and is easy to load without supporting the buttstock. This shotgun's light enough where, you know, normally you can, you violin load, you know, it takes a little strain off of, uh, off of your arms when you prop it up on your shoulder. So you get less fatigued, right, whenever you're loading. This shotgun's light enough, I don't even have to do it, I can just hold it and... I paid $129 for this one. But I also got the upgraded version. That's right, for an extra 10 bucks, I got Ghost Ring Sights. More about that when we get to the range. You know what? More about everything on the range. You guys just want to see the burn down. We're done here. Let's get to the burn down. Three inch magnum, what my wife calls me. Buckle up, it's gonna be a rough ride. We're going in, road dog. The Stevens 320 Chinese shotgun. Never met a Chinese guy named Stevens. This seems like it's pretty solidly made, albeit a little cheap feeling. So we got all kinds of old stuff, new stuff, birdshot, buckshot, slugs. This is what you like to see. Just loose, random. I see some slugs, I see some buck, I see some shit from the 60s, 70s. I mean, look at that bad boy right there. Is that paper? Let's go get started. Bio ammo, allegedly biodegradable and no lead. Yeah, three shot, 1,312 feet per second velocity. Chinese shotgun burn down, commence. <laughs> A good start. <laughs> no way, one round, no way. There must be something jammed up here. All right. 
Oh my God, you have got to be shitting me. It's going to be the easiest, easiest burn down ever. Yep. Bio ammo, this shotgun hates it. Red Star Ordnance, my boys in Serbia making this at Bellum. Super, super hot, but also reliable. Like a strong Rakia, this stuff will kick your ass. Rio four shot, 1400 feet per second. This stuff's also super hot. It's been reliable in our tests in the past. God, that stuff's brutal, but it ran well. So I don't know, maybe this shotgun's just breaking in. Maybe it just doesn't like the bio ammo. Federal premium, high velocity lead. Oof. Mm. This grip is pretty slippery, which actually makes it really hard. We're trying to do that push pull that we learned from Matt Hot, but um, not really getting a good, strong grip on this uh, foreend here. It's hard to get a good grip on the foregrip, so you're really depriving yourself of the use of your support hand, which is actually quite important for recoil mitigation with a shotgun. There, dude, there's no grip on this. It sucks. And I feel like this gun kicks for some reason. Harder because you can't use your support hand. Yeah. Agla. All new plastic. Western Super X Super Buckshot Loads. Plastic shotgun shots. All new. It's almost a shame to shoot this. I actually kind of want to keep this box. The guy who loaded this ammo got a tug job outside the sock hop in 1962. Oh, yeah. Dude, they didn't play at old Western Cartridge Factory when they were making this shit. Good grief. Ooh, smells like a campfire, too. Probably has asbestos in it. I mean, it's running it for whatever reason. The old tornado slug. The barrel here, the end cap for the magazine tube has been getting loose, and then I've been tightening it as we've been shooting it. Maybe it's kind of breaking in. Maybe everything's settling in because now we're not having the problems that we were having whenever we first got started with this massive piece of shit. Oh, and then we'll throw some rot while, oh no. Yeah, these are three inch magnum slugs. Yeah, I have no clue where these effing things are going. Um, I don't know if it's the, the front sight being like a little canid, if that's effing with me. I think this is a game? You're, you're right, it's game load. Federal classic slugs that look older than VHS tapes. Federal magnum shock slugs, two and three quarter inch. Shockers. Jesus Christ! <laughs> God, dude, these are no joke. Oh my God! Holy shit! Oh my God, those are the hardest two and three quarter rounds I have ever shot. And again, this is actually a really light shotgun. Plus, you've got no texture on the grip. And it's a pump. Everything that you you shoot comes right back here, right in the titty. I mean, it is, this is a brutal shotgun to shoot. I'll mention that. Now this is our grab bag, just a bunch of random shit, slugs, buck, bird. Five hundred. So, 
Um, some notes about this shotgun. This shotgun is by far, and Ryan and I completely agree on this, the hardest kicking shotgun that we have fired in our shotgun test by a huge margin, maybe because of how light it is. I don't know, maybe this rubber butt pad doesn't have a whole lot of give, but this was particularly brutal. I, I would not want to shoot this one again. What made things worse, no good texture on the foregrip. It was really hard to do a push pull. Like I'm serious, right now my, my wrists uh, kind of hurt, like are, are fatigued, a little cramped up from trying to put some forward pressure to get some of that force off my effing tit back here and I couldn't do it because you have to really grip the shit out of this thing. You saw the gun had a sticky action. It seems like that got better. There was some break in, so I'm not too upset about it, but you did see that we had some sticking, we had some weak ejection, weak extraction with this shotgun throughout. This is not a good shotgun. This is not a good shotgun, but it did technically survive the 500 round burn down. Even if it was a little picky, even if the action was a little sticky, this one's a winner and it did it. In fact, I'm just really impressed that you can get a $100 $30, whatever this piece of shit was, you can get it from China and it runs fine. And then, you know, you get something from Turkey that you pay double or triple for and it doesn't work worth a damn. I don't understand it. Oh, oh, slave labor. That's what it is, slave labor. <laughs> okay, conclusion. This isn't a very good shotgun, but it's the best shotgun I've tested that's cheaper than the Mossberg Maverick 88, whatever that means. It wasn't as reliable as I would have liked, certainly not as reliable as the Maverick, but I'll reluctantly say this gun passed the burndown because it did still remain in one piece and was, if anything, more functional at the end of the test than the beginning of it, ironically. The action's a little sticky, but it got better as we shot it, and I would imagine that if you ran a few hundred rounds through this son of a bitch, lubed it up, polished a few parts, it might not be that bad of a shotgun. It was picky with some types of ammo where it would lock up the action. This happened most of the time with bio ammo, which uses a plant-based hole and can sometimes be a little finicky with some shotguns. But the action did lock up with other rounds too, but not nearly as much as with the bio ammo. It was less than a handful of times over 500 rounds, but it was still a little sluggish. The action was not as enthusiastic as I'd hoped it would be, especially considering that the Winchester 1200 was known for having a fast action. It was called the speed pump. That's what they called me in college. And this was compounded by the slippery foregrip. Also, extraction was pretty weak with most rounds, possibly as a result of a sticky action in the not so sticky foregrip. Oh, that one locked it up, whatever that was. But the good news is it did survive the 500 round burn down. Ryan and I, on the other hand, did not. I literally died. This was without question the most brutal 500 round burn down we have ever done. That includes all Turkish shotguns, everything. This gun's light-ish, but it's not lighter than a Mossberg 590. The stock itself is also super light, super thin, and with not that great of a butt pad, not very squishy. Plus again, the foregrip is more slippery than a pocket full of pudding because it's smooth on this area where you're actually going to put your hand. That means you get very little tension, very little grip to try to help you manage recoil or rack the action. Our sights were also canned from the factory. Did I love this shotgun? No. But I would absolutely take this Chinese Winchester knockoff over any Turkish shotgun that I've reviewed in the past. Not only is it cheaper, but it did kind of go the distance without breaking apart or ceasing to function. It got better the more we shot it. $120 is the right price point because it makes it just attractive enough where you could save $80 versus the $200 Mossberg Maverick 88. Personally, I'd pony up for the Mav, which is more popular, has plenty of accessories available, is American made in Maverick County, Texas. But then again, I don't know what your situation is. So if $80 is a big difference to you and you're looking for something to defend yourself or your home with, this really wouldn't be 
a terrible choice. It's the cheapest I've ever reviewed, and it's the only gun under $200 to survive this test. I would just make sure to break it in, make sure it works reliably, and make sure that it runs specifically with the ammo that you're going to use. At the end of the day, these Stevens shotguns are also imported by Savage. Savage is a great company, so you know you're going to have warranty support should you ever need it. All in all, not bad. <sighs> yep. Don't forget to subscribe. This is my personal channel, and I'm moving the shotgun burndowns over here for the foreseeable future. So, again, think about supporting us, and take care. Your turn. <laughs>